Yeah, um, this, this talk is about the uh, decay of correlation in spin systems and uh, how uh, is it related to, uh, to the approximate counting algorithms. So let's begin with this, uh, um, this important example, the hardcore model on the rooted regular tree um, truncated at level L um, with this uh, uh, boundary condition. Uh, fixing the leaves to be occupied or unoccupied uh, by the random independent set, uh, which is sampled uh, proportional to this weight. And uh, in physics, uh, a well-known critical phenomenon is uh, that this uh, correlation between, the, uh, between this uh, boundary condition and the marginal distribution at the root decays to zero as the uh, depth grows to infinity as long as the, uh, this parameter uh, is bounded by this uh, critical threshold called the uniqueness threshold. And uh, if the parameter lambda is above this threshold, uh, then there's always a uh, long range correlation. And uh, an amazing connection to the computer science is, um, um, an amazing connection to the computer science is this, uh, um, physical phase transition phenomenon uh, in the infinite uh, regular structure actually coincides with the transition of the uh, computational complexity for approximate counting on the graphs, on the finite graphs of uh, bounded maximum degrees. And uh, this talk is about this uh, beautiful connection from the algorithm side and in spin systems where the hardcore model is a special case. So this is a spin system, um, given an undirected, uh, undirected graph and a fixed uh, integer q, uh, a configuration assign uh, one of the q spin states to every vertex. And uh, the weight of a configuration is given by this product of edge contributions and uh, uh, vertex contributions, described by this uh, interaction matrix, uh, which is actually a symmetric binary constraint function and also this unary constraint function, both with non-negative values. Um, so the computational problem here is to compute this uh, partition function, uh, as well as to sample from this Gibbs distribution. And uh, when Q equals, equals two, uh, the, spin, uh, uh, the spin states are, are Boolean. Um, up to the normalization, uh, the system, uh, the model can be described uh, uh, fully by these three parameters, um, beta gamma for the edge activity and uh, lambda for the external field. Okay. And in particular, when beta equals zero, gamma equals one, um, every configuration with non-zero weight uh, corresponds to an independent set in the graph with zero uh, indicating uh, a vertex being occupied by the, by the independent set. So this is the hardcore model. And uh, when beta equals gamma, it is the easy model. And uh, when, uh, for, for general Q, uh, the multi-spin model, um, when the interaction matrix is like this, it is the parts model. Independent set means no edges in the Q um, I mean, there's a set of vertices that none of them, uh, Every pair of the vertices is, is, uh, is not adjacent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So when beta equals zero, um, this is the proper Q coloring of graph. Okay. Um, so these are our models. And uh, I also want to consider the the monomodimer model of, uh, for matchings, uh, which is not a spin system, uh, but uh, also a uh, quite important model. And together with the hardcore model, these two can be unified into a general framework uh, called the hypergraph matching. And uh, uh, together, they are just a, a very natural subclass of uh, uh, Holand problems. And if you're not fami familiar with Holand framework, it's okay. Um, just remember that for these models, uh, the marginal probabilities in any uh, instance, any graphs is actually uh, marginal probability 
uh, in a tree of self-filling works. So this, this gives us some hope that the correlation decay on trees might somehow capture the tractability of uh, approximate counting. And you might have some doubts on this because we know uh, for ferro ferromagnetic easing model, um, the model is approximable despite there's no decay of correlation. I will explain later in this talk, uh, maybe there can be some. Uh, okay. So um, the marginal probabilities play a um, uh, key role in the uh, approximate counting. Um, by the chain rule, this uh, partition function can be decomposed uh, as a product of marginal probabilities. And uh, if, say, if we can um, approximately compute this um, uh, marginal probability uh, with arbitrary condition um, within an additive arrow efficiently, then we have uh, f betas for the partition function. So uh, from now on, we just focus on the approximation of, of marginal probabilities, okay? Um, and this uh, approximation can be done um, either by sampling from this uh, uh, conditional Gibbs measure or by uh, or determin deterministically by, by correlation decay algorithms. Um, the decay of correlation, also known as the spatial mixing, is defined uh, like this. Um, the weak spatial mixing requires that in a Gibbs measure, uh, the correlation between, uh, between this boundary condition and uh, the Gibbs, Gibbs distribution at a vertex measured by this uh, total variation distance uh, decays as the distance between the boundary and the vertex grow. And the decay rate is uh, given by this uh, decaying function delta of the distance. And uh, a weak spatial mixing, a spatial mixing is defined for either an infinite graph or a family of infinitely many finite graphs. And on infinite graph, uh, the weak spatial mixing is equivalent to the uniqueness of the infinite volume Gibbs measures. This is a generic uh, equivalence. And uh, in particular for the high core model, um, this threshold is actually the threshold for the uniqueness of Gibbs measures uh, on infinite d plus one regular tree. And hence it is called, the, uh, this condition is called the uniqueness condition. Do you have to assume something on delta to get the existence of that? Uh, sorry? You have to, what assumptions on delta do you need? Uh, it's uh, vanishing, it's decaying. But it can decay really slowly? Right, right, it's okay. Okay. Uh, as long as, you know, for everything, it must be, it must decay exponentially, but uh, for the uniqueness, it's, it's okay to be, to decay slowly. Even like power laws? Like okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, that's the weak spatial mixing, and the strong spatial mixing require further that uh, the, the correlation, uh, the decay of correlation still holds even conditioning on this, uh, uh, a subset of uh, uh, vertices being arbitrarily fixed, whose states being ab arbitrarily fixed. So with strong spatial mixing, um, the marginal probability, uh, this marginal pr probability with an arbitrary condition uh, is well approximated by local information. And, uh, and to, to establish the strong spatial mixing as well as to, to approximate this value uh, with not just the local information, but also lo local computation. Uh, this is done by uh, a recursion. And uh, um, still consider the hard core model. And uh, suppose your graph is a tree. And uh, um, the marginal probability of the root being occupied by the random independent set can be computed by this recursion uh, of the um, marginal probability of the children in the respective subtrees rooted by these children. And this recursion is uh, easy to obtain. And uh, for some reason, usually we, we usually work on the, another recursion for the ratio of the marginal probability being, of being occupied and uh, unoccupied. Um, the ratio is just a function of uh, probability. So 
it's easy to transform from this recursion to this one or the other way around. So this is the tree recursion. And uh, if your, your graph is not a tree, we can still have this uh, similar recursion. But now uh, we have to create, uh, for different branch, we have to create a, a, a new instance and with, with a subset of vertices whose states being fixed according to the chain rule. And so this product is, uh, now is a telescopic product. Uh, and uh, the recursion for the graph marginals still has the same form as the tree recursion. And this is true even additionally with conditioning on a, a sub subset of vertices being arbitrarily fixed. And we can run this recursion to the end and this, uh, it's finite, it, it will give us this self-awarding work tree, which is a tree uh, that enumerates all the self-awarding works uh, from the vertex V. And uh, um, the recursion for the graph marginals is the same as, um, the, same as the, the recursion, uh, the tree recursion in this, uh, um, in this uh, self folding work tree. Uh, so the marginal uh, at vertex in the graph is preserved by the marginal uh, at the root in this self folding work tree expanded from that vertex. And, and it is easy to uh, see that uh, if we have strong spatial mixing in trees, uh, then we have a strong spatial mixing in graphs. And also, uh, because the self folding work tree is also a device for the, for the computation of this, uh, this marginal probability. Um, if we have strong spatial mixing in trees, um, we can truncate this uh, self loading work tree up to the log n level and, re and run this uh, truncated recursion from arbitrary initial value. Uh, this will give us a pretty good approximation of the marginal probability. So it will also give us f petas. Okay. And this construction of self loading work tree um, hold for uh, all two spin systems and also uh, for monomer dimer model and uh, generally the hypergraph matchings with a slightly different uh, for these rules to, dealing, to deal with uh, cycle closing uh, vertices. Are you and also the same interaction at every edge uh, uh, in these two spin models? So it's 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 for uh, for a general CSP model. So the recursion is for variables in CSPs. Okay. So, uh, but still, it's self folding work tree in the incidence graph for that uh, CSP. Also, the same same recursion as in the same model, but only in a tree. I wasn't sure I got the answer to the question. It's are the activities um, uniform from state to state, or does that not matter? Uh, the activity is, what, what activity do you mean? They, they must, yeah. they're constant. Yeah. Okay, stationary, sort of. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, that was equivalent to my question. I didn't understand your question. I think <laughs> <it's probably laughs> I thought what you were saying that you basically have the same Hamiltonian in each state. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. So, your vertex. question? Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what he's assuming. Okay. Okay. So, um, so it's sufficient to prove strong spatial mixing in trees uh, to support the Peters, right? Um, so, so let's just consider the Hakko model, and uh, um, now our goal is to prove the strong spatial mixing in trees with boundary maximum degree and as with the assumption of this uniqueness condition which correspond to the weak spatial mixing in this particular regular tree. And uh, Y's approach to this goal is uh, to prove this uh, uh, combinatorial proposition, which says the extremal case for the weak spatial mixing among a family of trees with bounded degree uh, is given by this uh, regular tree, particular regular tree. This is in enough to prove the strong spatial mixing for the hardcore model because uh, the hardcore model is uh, self-reducible, which means um, um, 
remember, uh, remember that strong spatial mixing is nothing but weak spatial mixing with some condition. And uh, for self-reducible model, uh, fixing vertices uh, is if effectively the same as you have a smaller tree. So weak spatial mixing among, uh, in a, for a family of trees uh, with boundary degree is the same as strong spatial mixing for a family of trees. Okay. Um, so now prove this uh, extremal result. Um, Observe that an uh, irregular tree can be simulated by a regular tree with non-uniform external field, um, where the missing vertices having the zero field. So this uh, vector of non-uniform fields is one-to-one -one correspondent to the uh, irregular tree. Okay? And let R plus and R minus sub L be the uh, extremal marginal ratio at the root. Um, in this uh, irregular tree achieved by any boundary condition at level L. By the, uh, by the monotonicity of the system, we know that uh, these extremal boundary conditions must, must be all occupied or, or unoccupied condition. And so this quantity follows this uh, uh, recursion. And we can define the same thing for the regular tree with uniform field also follows the same recursion. And we then apply a quite delicate induction uh, to this recursion, and we can uh, prove that um, this gap is bounded, uh, this gap uh, for the irregular tree is always dominated by the regular version. So this proved the, um, uh, the weak spatial mixing, uh, the ex extremal case, for the weak spatial mixing in terms of this log of ratio as indeed the regular tree. Provided like, the vector of lambda is bounded by lambda, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, the vector of lambda is just uh, a lambda or zero. OK. Yeah, so of course bounded by, yeah. Um, um, so um, then uh, we have this and also uh, assuming the weak spatial mixing, uh, weak spatial mixing for this particular, uh, for this particular regular tree, which corresponds to our uniqueness uh, condition, we have the strong spatial mixing with same rate. And in particular, if this lambda is below uh, this threshold, we have uh, exponential rate decay. Is uh, there a combinatorial interpretation of that critical lambda? <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know the combinatorial interpretation of this. Um, maybe later, in later slides, you will see this. Uh, uh, and also, um, by, the, by the salt tree, by the self wooding work tree, with the, such strong spatial mixing, you have epitas under this condition. And also, Weiss uh, approach easily give us the strong spatial mixing at the uniqueness threshold, but with much slow rate, uh, not enough to support uh, fast aerism. And also, uh, an amazing for, uh, due to these amazing results, uh, when lambda is greater than this threshold, uh, the problem is uh, inapproximable. Um, of course, this leaves uh, uh, one case open, which is our first open problem in this talk the approximability of the hardcore model when lambda at, right at this uh, threshold. So um, you may think this is uh, just a one meaningless special case. And also, uh, wise technique, wise approach uh, may be too delicate to extend to other models. Uh, but just consider this model, um, the matching of hypergraphs uh, of hypergraphs with bounded degree and a bounded edge size. Um, under duality, it's, uh, it's equivalent to the independent sets in hypergraph matchings, but there are um, at least two definitions for independent sets in hypergraphs, and this corresponds to the less popular one. So uh, anyway, it's just a, a natural CSP uh, problem with uh, variables on one side, 
um, Boolean variables on one side and uh, um, constraints on the other side. Um, and these constraints are packing constraints or matching constraints or at least one, uh, at most one constraints. So which means uh, it is satisfied as long as the uh, sum of the involved uh, variables is at most one. Otherwise, it's false. Okay. So this gives us a natural CSP problem. And uh, the partition function is the sum over the um, feasible solutions, uh, the weight of the feasible solutions, where the weight is given by the lambda to the number of ones. Okay. And the de degree on this side is bounded by d plus 1, and this side is bounded by uh, k plus 1. And this model uh, generalized uh, both the um, uh, hardcore model and the monomer dimer model. When k equals 1, this is just the, the dimer model. When d equals 1, this is the hardcore model. And uh, uh, for this model, the uniqueness threshold uh, in the uniform, infinite uniform regular hypertree is this. So when k equals 1, it's just a uniqueness threshold for the hardcore. And with Y's approach, we can prove the strong spatial mixing uh, uh, up to this, this threshold uh, with the same rate as the weak spatial mixing. So we have uh, uh, F peters uh, below this threshold. And uh, due to a very simple reduction from the hardcore model by doubling the hyper edge, uh, when lambda is ab about twice, beyond about twice this threshold, we have hardness. But between them, between these two, we, we know nothing. And uh, this threshold case now is quite meaningful because it corresponds to a combinatorial problem, uh, counting the matchings in three uniform hypergraphs of maximum degree five. Uh, for this case, lambda critical is just a one. So this um, it's just the counting the numbers. So this natural combinatorial problem uh, sit right at the threshold. So, so. and uh, Certainly, uh, so this gives us the second open problem to close this gap. And um, now is there is some, quite some in inconsistency between upper and lower bound. For the hardness, the hard instance has many small cycles. And for algorithm side, we know from Y's approach, uh, the weak spatial mixing, the extremal case for weak spatial mixing, as well as strong spatial mixing, just the trees, regular trees. So, Inconsistent, and uh, we now we we think it looks like uh, this curve cannot be tight, right? Uh, but this is also um, a barrier result to the current uh, hardness reduction. Uh, the local convergence required uh, by the by the hardness um, to the infinite regular tree does not exist for any sequence of finite hypergraphs uh, if k is not equal to 1. So um, I'd love to, uh, so, so it means uh, uh, the, we need some new technique to close this gap. Either algorithm without strong spatial mixing or hardness without local convergence. So I'd love to talk more uh, about this uh, open problem in our weekly seminar maybe. Um, but now let's move on to the uh, next. Uh, next I will uh, introduce uh, a powerful tool uh, for the spatial mixing, strong spatial mixing, the potential method. Recall that uh, still uh, for hardcore model, um, it's enough to prove strong spatial mixing if we can bound this uh, uh, ratio at the root, um, the, the gap of the ratio at the root. Uh, with arbitrary pair of uh, boundary conditions disagreeing at level L or further. And these uh, ratios follow the recursion, follow this recursion. So it, it's same to uh, 
to show that for this dynamical system of, uh, of recursion in this tree uh, with arbitrarily fixed values in the middle, and uh, the final output uh, at the root is insensitive to this uh, arbitrary in initial values. So let's see. Um, let's first uh, simplify the situation at, and look at this symmetric version. Uh, it is a univariate. Uh, um, it is a univariate uh, dynamical system with a unique, a unique fixed point. Okay. And uh, if this uh, fixed point is attractive, um, by attractive I mean uh, the derivative at fixed point uh, has abs absolute value uh, at most one. And it's a, uh, the fixed point is attractive if and only if uh, uh, lambda is uh, uh, bounded by this critical threshold. So recall this is the uniqueness condition, right? Sorry, what are we doing with f? Uh, I don't understand the last slide. Uh, okay, okay. Um, f is just uh, this recursion for the ratio, the tree recursion for the ratio. So you have your self voting work tree, and you have your tr recursion for computing the marginal ratio. Okay. And uh, suppose um, you know. You know, just to start with a simplified symmetric version, right? And uh, um, we know that if the fixed point is attractive, uh, the system converge within a local neighborhood around this fixed point. And otherwise, if it's repulsive, it's, it does not converge. So um, the uniqueness, for now, the uniqueness condition is just a necessary condition for the uh, for the convergence of, it, of this uh, symmetric system. We want to make this also a sufficient condition for the convergence of general multivariate system. Okay. And this is done by the potential analysis, translating the uh, recursion uh, quantity to uh, another quantity called the potential. So we apply this uh, translation to the current recursive quantity x to uh, y. We call it the potential uh, by a monotone potential function phi. Uh, we have done this uh, already because uh, recall that we first, uh, we, we first have a, a recursion for the marginal probability p. And now this recursion is actually for the mar marginal ratio r. So by doing this, we already translate p to r by uh, this monotone mapping from p to r. So nothing uh, forbid us to do it more. So we just, uh, so we just uh, um, for a mysterious reason, we just uh, choose to choose this potential function. And uh, with this uh, potential function, we can figure out the new recursion, g of y. And this new recursion is really nice. Uh, its gradient is bounded everywhere. Um, assuming the attractive, attractiveness of the fixed point. Um, we can verify this. Uh, the derivative of this new recursion is given by this. See, see, see now um, we can see this uh, potential function help us to modify the, the, the derivative of f. And uh, we choose our, by choosing our, by choosing the derivative of this uh, uh, potential function as this, um, so now you get some idea why we choose this uh, strange uh, potential function because we want this derivative. And with this derivative, we have a nice balanced trade-off between x and fx. And fx is a decreasing function. So hopefully they have some trade-off here. And indeed, uh, this is always bounded by um, by the by the you know, by, uh, uh, always founded uh, by some constant less than one, assuming the uh, assuming the the uniqueness condition. So that's this is for the um, so so assuming the uniqueness condition, the the new recursion, the new system for for the potentials always contract, no matter where we are, at every step. So. That's for the univariate system. Now move on to the multivariate system, general multivariate system. And we still 
apply the same translation here. Um, and uh, we can figure out the uh, new recursion for the potentials, a multivariate recursion. And uh, for any pair of initial values, uh, it causes some arrows everywhere at every vertex. And these arrows are combined uh, due to the mean value theorem. It's combined as an inner product of the gradient, uh, between the gradient and uh, the, the arrows at the children. And this is the inner product where the capital phi represents a derivative of the potential function. And uh, we take the maximum, we take the maximum of the arrow among the children. And uh, the factor is now move out like this. And by choosing, still by choosing the potential function as this, we have this nice balanced form. And due to the Jensen's inequality, it can be bounded by the symmetric version, which we know is always less than one, assuming the uniqueness uh, condition. So this gives us um, a, 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 this gives us a exponential decay um, along a, a worst worst case path along a worst path in the system for the potentials. And assuming, of course, assuming the, the, the uniqueness condition. And then uh, we can translate this back to the original uh, system for the marginal ratios or the marginal probabilities. And this will uh, give us uh, some overhead, constant overhead, caused by the first and the last step of translation. But still, it's uh, exponential decay. And that's for the hardcore model. We can prove uh, the strong spatial mixing in this way. And this technique, this approach can be extended um, to general system, like uh, the antiferral, antiferral uh, two-speed model. Uh, by antiferral, I mean uh, beta times gamma is less than one. So the disagreeing neighbors uh, favor over agreeing ones. Okay? And uh, so now the general uh, recursion is like this uh, for the general two-spin model. When beta equals zero, gamma equals one, it's just a hardcore model. That's also for the ratios, marginal ratios. And uh, uh, applying this, uh, choosing, by choosing this uh, uh, derivative of the uh, potential function like this, uh, so Remember, only the derivative of potential function does matter, um, even though its integration does not necessarily have a, a closed form, as long as it's monotone, that's enough. And then uh, the decay factor in the potential world uh, is given by this, which is still pretty balanced and uh, has a similar form to the, actually to the, to the der derivative. And also, uh, it's always bounded uh, below one, uh, as long as uh, the uniqueness condition is satisfied at the d plus one regular tree. So for antiferral two-spin model on graphs with uh, bounded maximum degree, um, we define the uniqueness uh, uh, condition. Um, we define the uniqueness condition as uh, the regime that uh, weak spatial mixing on all, on all uh, deregular trees uh, holds uh, for bounded D. And this gives us a regime for the uh, beta gamma lambda. And uh, when the beta gamma lambda, the parameters in the interior of this regime, we have F betas uh, for graphs with bounded degree. And uh, um, if the parameter is uh, uh, strictly outside this regime, the problem is, is hard to approximate. Um, and a new uh, phenomenon in, uh, in general antiferral two-spin model is uh, um, the decay rate uh, is no longer, may no longer be monotone in the degree. So um, 
so the worst case, so recall that uh, wise approach, the key step in wise approach. Uh, the extreme case um, for the weak spatial mixing among a family of trees may no longer be the regular tree of the highest degree. And this complication uh, is actually also a blessing because um, uh, as the de degree grows, the decay rate drops so fast. Um, we can have uh, fast algorithms for general graphs with unbounded degrees. So altogether, this gives a complete classification of the approximability uh, for furrow to spin, except for the critical threshold on, uh, on all graphs of bounded degrees and also on all general graphs. Okay. That's the good news for uh, anti -ferrol. And for ferro, ferro to spin, where the beta times gamma is greater than one, uh, things, things get much more complicated. And uh, um, due to these uh, classical um, algorithms, we have Apirus for ferro easing model uh, with all uh, uniform external field, external field and also all activities. And uh, uh, for the ferro, general ferro, is, uh, ferro two spin with, within this regime, we also have uh, randomized algorithms. And also there is also a regime which is a bit hard to approximate. And I'm not going into detailed description of, about this uh, knowledge, um, except telling you that uh, there's still a gap between upper and lower bound. And even just the, these algorithms, um, they tell us, uh, they cause some cri crisis in our belief of, uh, of, the, of that uh, uh, the correlation decay somehow captures the approximability of this model. Because furrowing model um, not, does not always have correlation decay in all trees, yet it's still uh, approximable. Uh, so the model is approximate despite there's no decay of correlation. Um, or maybe there is. Maybe there are some sort of other decay of correlation. So um, let's consider this, um, this weaker form of decay of correlation, uh, even weaker than the weak spatial mixing. Um, I call this uh, a primitive spatial mixing. Uh, the name is uh, is unofficial. It, it it did not it did not exist last week, um, but the notion has been there for a while. Um, so, uh, for a family of uh, trees, uh, the rooted trees, um, we say um, a, the, the the primitive spatial mixing holds PSM holds uh, if any uh, pair of uh, rooted trees, uh, which are isomorphic to each other for the first L levels. Um, uh, the marginal distribution at the respect to roots are pretty close. Okay. So compared to the weak spatial mixing, it's even, even weaker because it has no fixed uh, vertices. So no boundary condition, no vertices have states uh, fixed. And in the dynamical system, it means the, all the initial values must be realizable by subtrees. Okay. And uh, uh, in order to show um, how much it, this notion of decay of correlation is connected to, um, to the approximate counting, let's uh, deviate a little bit to the concept of belief propagation. So uh, given the graph, um, possibly with cycles, the loopy belief propagation is just uh, um, uh, like this. It's defined like this. We 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 maintain a variable for every edge orientation, and starting with uh, some arbitrary initial value, we update these uh, variables according to this updating rule. Um, this is not uh, exactly the same as uh, what you have seen uh, uh, the loopy belief propagation, but they're equivalent. Uh, so it's basically it's a loopy belief propagation put in our framework of the uh, tree recursion. So 
um, at any time t for any variable, we track back it's a tree, right? All the way to the initial value. So certainly uh, if we have weak spatial mixing on all trees, um, we have the convergence for this procedure. But if um, you choose the initial values wisely, um, you can choose your initial value, it's your algorithm. And uh, so that every initial value is realizable by some subtree. And then primitive spatial mixing uh, on trees is enough to uh, guarantee the convergence for this restricted, restricted uh, procedures. It's not an algorithm, it's a heuristic because even if it, it converges, it does not guarantee to converge to a correct value. But it gives some idea um, why this uh, even weaker notion of decay of correlation may support algorithms. And next, uh, here probably is the most uh, controversial part of the talk. Um, um, here is the conjecture. Um, the approximability of feral two-spin systems on all graphs is captured by the uh, primitive spatial mixing on all trees. I don't know how much it is true, but um, seems that uh, existing algorithms does, do not refute this conjecture. Also, hardness. Um, and also, there is uh, some uh, recent, very recent uh, result making progress towards this conjecture. Um, it proves that uh, in this regime, uh, the primitive spatial mixing uh, indeed uh, holds on all trees. And in a, uh, also a feral, feral magnetic uh, regime. And if addition beta is below is smaller than one, then uh, fixing vertices for this regime, um, fixing vertices um, has the same effect as having a subtree down there. So PSM um, is equivalent to SSM among all trees in this regime. So we have SSM, then we have F Peters. So recall that for the hardcore model, pinning is just a pruning, just a delete some vertices. So certainly for hardcore model, a model like that, or any self-reducible model, PSM is among all trees, is it, or a class of bounded degree trees, is equivalent as the SSM for this family of tree. So now that towards this, uh, this conjecture, the challenging part is to show we can have algorithms of PETAS or f -perus, um, Even um, PSM is strictly weaker than the weak spatial mixing. So we have primitive spatial mixing, but we do not have weak spatial mixing. And that's exactly what uh, Jerome Sinclair's uh, uh, random work for the uh, ESIG model uh, have done. Uh, okay, um, and um, the, um, okay, uh, that's the, then the, 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 the Marty spin, the Q coloring. Uh, and uh, for this uh, problem, uh, the, we know the uniqueness threshold on regular trees and uh, um, below this threshold, Q less than the, Q is the number of the color and delta is the uh, degree. Uh, 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 the problem is hard uh, to approximate. And uh, um, from the algorithm side, um, the correlation decay based algorithm uh, failed miserably uh, for this problem. Um, it seems that uh, even achieving a threshold like uh, Q is twice the degree is difficult enough, challenging enough. And consider that's only, that's almost the starting point for the, for the randomized algorithm. Um, and uh, if, um, for, for spatial mixing only result, we have some better uh, bounds um, by analyze, by, by keep checking the, the error propagations in the original Gibbs measures, uh, but not in the, some computation device like self-avoiding work tree. So uh, to closing the gap 
um, between upper and lower bound uh, for this problem is uh, one of the most important, important open problems in the area. Uh, so I cannot help listing it here uh, irresponsibly. Um, and uh, um, there are several reasons for the failure of the correlation decay based algorithms. So uh, we, we still have similar uh, recursions for the marginal probabilities like this one. And for each uh, neighbor and the color, we create a uh, new instance. And so it's a, it's a vector to vector uh, system recursion. And, uh, um, and ideally, um, these vectors are so, supposed to be simplexes, um, ideally. Uh, they are supposed to be marginal distributions. And that's true in trees. If your graph is a tree, that's true. But it, for general graph, it's no longer true because for different color, we actually access to, to different instances. They're not, they do not belong to the same marginal distribution. So that's a complication. And that's, that seems to be true for other recursions. And, um, also, the recursion has uh, incre is increasing in some variables and decreasing in some others, also a complication. And anyway, the, uh, the current technique for strong spatial mixing fails, um, seems, uh, you know, uh, fails to, to overcome this uh, complication. So maybe just establish a threshold for the strong spatial mixing is, is uh, challenging enough for this problem. Uh, yeah, this, this model. So that's all I uh, can talk about uh, about the, uh, the multi-spin system. So let's move back to the two-spin model. For this model, we understand it better. Um, recall that uh, we have a, a, a dynamic system for marginals or for, for marginal ratios or for, for the potentials uh, translated from these quantities. And uh, um, the propagation of arrows, the combination of arrows in this dynamical system is given by this uh, inner product. And uh, here x is just uh, some values uh, among the children uh, determined by the mean value theorem. So it's pretty arbitrary. And uh, the previous, uh, so yeah, that's for, for the hardcore model. Uh, that's too abstract. Concretely, for the hardcore model, uh, with this choice of potential function, uh, this is our inner product. And uh, the previous uh, approach is uh, to take, this, take the maximum over these uh, arrows. And we have L1 norm of the gradient outside. And uh, uh, this basically gives us a, a correlation decay along a worst path. And if ideally, we have decay not for the max, but for the sum of the arrows, yeah, it's much, much better. And, uh, and more generally and practically, um, if not for L1 norm, but LP norm of arrows, then every pass from the root to the disagreeing boundary uh, contributes something to the arrow at the top. And it means the decay of correlation is determined by the number of self-holding works to the disagreeing path. Uh, to the disk screen boundary. Um, it's, it's a, it's a uh, refined way to capture the, the correlation decay. Because if ideally, if it is indeed, uh, indeed the, the decay for, for the sum, it's L1 norm, then we can have some aggregate version of SSM. I will define it later. But anyway, it implies the optimal mixing time for global dynamics if the, the, the model is monotone. I will also uh, mention it later. Um, and if it's not for L1 norm, it, it's not so ideal. It's for some LP norm with some finite P. Then we can have everism, F peters, uh, for the graphs with bounded connected constant, which is a notion of average degree, not maximum degree. Okay. So let's first uh, uh, define this aggregate version of spatial mixing. 
So um, we call that in a Gibbs measure, and uh, a, we have a boundary of a region. And for every boundary vertex, we take the extremal influence um, to the marginal distribution at vertex V uh, caused by any pair of uh, uh, boundary conditions that disagree, that differ only at this boundary uh, vertex. Okay? And enumerate all of them and sum over all these extremal influence. If this quantity is decaying, we say we have aggregate weak or strong spatial mix. And the difference between weak and strong is uh, still uh, whether we have this extra condition. And certainly, um, it's easy to see that if you have ASSM, you have SSM. But the other way around, uh, the other direction is not necessarily true in general. Because uh, ESSM is pretty strong. It basically says, almost says you, 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 you pass, uh, can decide the decay of correlation um, individually. So, but for, in general, um, in general, a pass alone usually has slow, much, much substantially slow decay of correlation um, than a pass hidden in a, for, in a, in a, in a tree. Uh, but there are a few exceptions. Um, then, uh, if you have, uh, due to a, a, a very elegant coupling proof, um, we know if we have a ASSM, aggregated version of strong spatial mixing, the mixing time of Glauber dynamics is optimal. We have this optimal mixing time. And uh, um, Although we still have uh, epitas, of course we have epitas, but the correlation decay algorithm, the deterministic ones, although it's polynomial, it's a large polynomial. But here, if we have this strong version of spatial mixing, the, the, we have very fast randomized algorithms. And the monotone uh, system here in the two-spin model means it's feral two-spin or anti-feral two-spin on bipartite graphs. So something we can apply censoring technique. And back to our inner product. Uh, if ideally we can have this uh, sort of uh, uh, decay of correlation for the L1 norm, and with this factor, with this factor, then we have aggregated version of strong spatial mix. Um, it's easy to see because uh, the growth uh, rate of the number of paths uh, slower is slower than the than the contribution. Uh, along every path, so accumulation still decaying, and this can be achieved for feral two-spin model uh, with bounded degree in this regime, and it's quite easy to prove. Just uh, apply the same analysis with a very natural potential function log x. Okay, the log of the ratio, and it's. Uh, I don't have time for doing this, but you can believe me. Um, so in this regime, we have this thing, and in L1 norm, decaying L1 norm, which is ASSM, and which gives us optimal mixing time. Um, and observe that for the easing model without field, without external, uh, without field means lambda equals one. Um, this is just the, the uniqueness threshold. But in general, for other two-spin model, uh, it's not. It's uh, strictly stronger than the uniqueness condition. Okay, and uh, um, also it's yeah, this uh, a decay in L1 norm is really strong, so we don't expect to hold that generally. Um, but we can still maybe relax a little bit to to have decay in in LP norm, right? Decay in LP norm. So practically, for LP norm, we have a p to the power of p here is influence. I'm not sure how, or whether it will imply the similar optimal mixing time. That'd be nice. But uh, still, um, with that relaxed uh, uh, decay in LP norm, 
we can have uh, F Peters for graphs with bounded average degree measured by the connected constants. Um, the connected constant is uh, extensively studied quantity uh, in physics and also in mathematics. Um, so in an infinite graph, um, it is defined as this limit and uh, can be uh, naturally extended to the family of uh, um, finite graphs. And basically it just uh, says, the, uh, it roughly gives the um, growth rate, average growth rate of the number of self folding works from a vertex. And uh, um, so it gives some notion of uh, average degree. And for example, for the erlich Rennie graph, uh, a random graph with average degree, uh, constant average degree d, uh, with high probability the connective constant uh, is very close to the average degree. Um, while its uh, maximum degree is log n over log log n, a super constant. And uh, the computation of uh, connected constant for the um, infinite lattice graph is notoriously hard. Um, and even for this uh, particular honeycomb lattice, um, the exact value of, this, uh, connect, of its connected constant is considered as a uh, breakthrough um, in mathematics. Um, but now, uh, move back to this uh, inner product, this combination of uh, arrows. Um, we apply the Holder's inequality to break this inner product into LP and LQ norm. And uh, if this LQ norm of the gradient can be bounded by some factor alpha, then we basically we can say we have strong spatial mixing and F Peters um, for the family of graphs with um, connected constant bounded by one over alpha. Because it's easy to see because uh, the growth rate, the growth rate of, uh, of the number of paths is basically delta to L in L level and uh, the contribution of the decay is alpha to L, cancel this, we have exponential decay. And uh, for the hard core model, back to the hard core model, apply the Holder's inequality with this very critically cho chosen um, uh, P. LP norm with this very critically chosen P, where delta C is the critical degree, actually the critical branching factor satisfying this uh, uniqueness threshold uh, for this uh, lambda. Then with this particular P, no smaller, no bigger, then this factor is always bounded by one over delta critical. So back to the um, uh, to the problem, um, we basically says we have F Peters for the family of graphs uh, for hardcore model uh, for family of graphs with bounded connect constant, as long as uh, the uniqueness condition is satisfied in terms of connect constant instead instead of maximum degree. And also we have seen that easing without field, we can work with L1 norm, so of course we have this result. And extending this, uh, this scheme, we can do this similarly for the monomer dimer. But now for any constant connected, uh, any bounded connected constant, finite connected constant. And uh, due to a um, classical result, we know we have F periods for counting matchings for all graphs for the monomer dimer model. Uh, for randomized algorithms, we have we have randomized approximation algorithm for all graphs, and uh, the, actually the deterministic uh, correlation decay based algorithm works for graphs with any bounded degree. And now we extend it somehow to the graphs with bounded average degree. So naturally, the last open question is um, how to do this deterministically um, for any graphs. Uh, and that's the, these are the lovely open questions, open problems today. And uh, we have various kinds of uh, spatial mixing, the decay of correlations um, here. And um, for, the hard, uh, for the hardcore models, 
for the Huckle model, the first three is equivalent. For the easing without field, the last three is equivalent. And uh, uh, an, important an important question is to how to establish the correct one and related to, to approximate counting. And that's all for the talk. Thank you. This is pretty amazing. Before your talk, I would have guessed that the Ising model on a tree was somewhat trivial. But does it have a like ferromagnetic paramagnetic phase transition between like some temperature? It seems like. Uh yeah yeah it does. yeah it does uh, in infinite regular tree right? Yeah yeah it does uh, uniqueness and weak spatial mixing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, without field. It's uh, it's just a uh, this uh, ASM, ASSM, see, without field, it's the same as this. What is it, um, what's known about that uh, phase transition? Do we know, like, is it the same universality class as, like, Ising on a square grid? Oh, that's uh, for lattice graph? Um, yeah. It's more complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we kind of, yeah, we, we can prove the weak spatial mixing because we can prove strong spatial mixing, and of course we can prove weak spatial mixing up to some 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 parameter threshold. But it still has as a is a some gap from the conjectured one for the grid and for other lattice model. The grid is here's a, a empirical empirical threshold uh, for the phase transition. It's like a 3.7 something. That currently, it's uh, approach. The one is 2.49 for lambda for the hardcore model. Sorry, yeah, for easing. I don't know. You can exactly solve it. Oh yeah, for easing without field, yeah, you can solve it. But for with field, who knows? Yeah. Okay. With field, we don't even have this. We don't have a connector constant thing. Uh, what I mentioned here is almost uh, just uh, everything. <laughs> so for any other models, um, it doesn't work, actually. Uh, any other model doesn't work. But the belief is somehow that like, looking at trees, you can get a good sense of these sorts of hardness dichotomy theorems for general graphs? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's my belief. But <laughs> it's rather bold, I think. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah.